These are nice stars. If I tell you they have a fractional number of sides, it's weird, isn't it? In this video, we'll make sense of this idea. Before we come to stars, let's consider this regular heptagon. This central angle is equal to 360 degrees by 7. And these pink angles are all equal. The exterior angles can be found easily. The blue angle is equal to the pink and green ones together. That's because angles in a triangle and those in a straight line both add up to 180 degrees. Hence, the exterior angle equals the central angle, that is 360 degrees by 7. And of course, an n-sided regular polygon has exterior angle 360 degrees by n. Conversely, if the exterior angle is 360 degrees by n, then our shape has n side. Now we look at the stars. By extending the sides of our heptagon, wait! When sides are right next to each other, they meet in the corners of the heptagon. But when sides are two away from each other, they intersect at the vertices of a particular seven-pointed star, which you can draw thus. Put seven equally space points on a circle. Then, starting anywhere, keep on joining every second point till you're back where you started. Similarly, when sides of the heptagon are free away from each other, they cross at the vertices of another seven-pointed star, where now you join every third point. We'll easily find the exterior angles of these two stars. Extend three adjacent sides in the heptagon. These white angles alpha are just the exterior angles of the heptagon. This yellow angle beta, which is the exterior angle of the first star, equals 360 degrees by seven halves. But, doesn't an exterior angle of 360 by n imply a shape of n sides? Hence, our first star has 7 by 2 sides. And similarly, as gamma the exterior angles of the second star equals 360 degrees by 7 thirds, therefore our second star has 7 by 3 sides. There are two good things when thinking of a fractional number of sides. Firstly, you know how to draw the shape. For example, to draw a 22 by 7 sided star, plot 22 equally space points on a circle, then join every 7. Secondly, we immediately know the exterior angle to be 360 degrees by 22 sevenths. By generalizing the idea, Notice a few points. In a p by q sided star, p and q are positive integers. Further, q needs not be greater than half of p. Now we'll see how the world of stars is a bit like the world of numbers, or a Lego set. Well, with 22 points on a circle, and i joining every fourth, I want a 22 by 4 sided star. Thing is, I'm back where I began, but did not hit all the points. But looking closely, ignoring points that are missed, the resulting star is an 11 by 2 sided one. And of course, 22 by 4 is equal to 11 by 2. In fact, whenever P and Q are not co-prime, we won't hit all points. Actually, stars where P and Q are co-prime are like prime numbers, in that they are the basic stars from which other stars where P and Q are not co-prime can be composed. For example, 
the 22 by 4 sided store is different from the 11 by 2 sided one. It consists of two superposed 11 by 2 sided stores. And similarly, a 15 by 5 sided store is composed of five triangles. We are led to an interesting problem. How many prime stars are there? Of course, an infinity. But how many p-pointed prime stars are there? This is the same as asking, up to a number p, how many numbers are prime to p? If we call this value phi of p, then there are phi of p divided by two p-pointed prime stars. For example, phi of 24 equals 8. Here's a systematic way to get phi of 24. Writing the prime factorization of 24, we know that the only prime numbers giving 24 are 2 and 3. Now, up to 24, there are, well, 24 numbers. Dividing 24 by 2 gives 12, and this is how many numbers up to 24 are divisible by 2. We subtract this from 24 to get 12. Dividing 12 by 3 gives 4, and subtracting 4 from 12 gives 8, the multitude of numbers up to 24 and prime to it. And indeed, when we know all the prime numbers by which any number n is divisible, say p, q, r, and so on, we get a nice expression for phi of n. And how many prime p-pointed stars are there? Phi of p by 2. For example, there are only three 18-pointed prime stars. We have reached the end of this video, which was motivated by the 3B1B Summer of Math Exposition 2. Note that throughout, by stars, I really meant self-crossing stars. If they are not self-crossing, they are just polygons with an integral number of sides. You will have recognized phi of n as Euler's torsion function, which is why, maybe, a little discussion about self-crossing stars is perhaps a subject not wholly unworthy of communication.